Today we're going to continue learning about SketchUp, but this time we're going to focus on the inside of a house rather than the outside. So first things first, I've already opened up SketchUp. You should know how to do that. And I'm going to change the camera view um, just for a minute. So I'm going to go up to view. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to, to camera. Over to standard views, and I'm going to go for a top view. And what's happening here is I'm looking straight down at my model. So right now I can't actually see um, my person anymore because I'm sort of looking straight down at her, and she's kind of she's actually kind of flat. She's two dimensional. If I were to orbit a little bit, you'd see that she's still there. She's just sort of hidden. So I'm going to make sure that I'm back on the top view. And I'm going to draw the outline of a, of a small house. Now I'm going to draw a sort of living room area, a bedroom area, and a kitchen area. Um, your model should have at least those three places. If you want to add some more, um, that's just fine. <coughs> it doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but it should look, um, it should look similar. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. And I'm going to click and let go. And I'm going to draw a living room area that is about 25 feet comma 25 feet. So it's 25 feet squared. I'm going to press enter. There's my living room area. Coming off of my living room, I'm going to add um, a bedroom. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool again. It's really important that if you want to draw a rectangle connected to this first rectangle that you start at one of the corners. Otherwise, you're going to have a really hard time making it line up correctly. So I'm going to start at a corner, click, and this one I'm just going to sort of eyeball. Uh, I'm not going to make it quite as big as a living room. Um, maybe just something like this for my bedroom. And over here, I'm going to go down to the bottom corner. I'm going to click, and I'm going to make a nice long kitchen. Actually, I'm going to press escape. I'm going to get a better view so that I can... There we go. Okay. So this is the rough outline of the house I'm going to have. And this time I'm not really going to be concerned with roofs and that kind of thing. I'm going to be more focused on the inside, um, the interior of the house. But I do need to raise it up off the ground, so I'm going to grab my push-pull tool. I'm going to click once and let go, and start raising the roof. <laughs> raising the roof. And I'm going to tell it that I want the roof to be, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's just go with 20 feet. Enter. Okay, now I'm going to raise the other two sections. What I can do now is I can just click once on this section, and if I take the mouse to the very edge of my living room, that's telling it I want it to be the exact same height, and that's what I want to do. So I'm just going to click, move my mouse there, click again, and now my, my house is three-dimensional. Of course, the problem is I can't see into the house yet, um, so we need to get rid of sort of the ceiling and maybe a few of the walls. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my select tool, I'm going to grab the roof, press the delete key on the keyboard, and I can see inside just fine. I think um, I'm also going to go ahead and get rid of these walls so that I can really see inside. And just to make it look right, I'm going to go ahead and erase these lines up here. Okay. Now, of course, one thing I noticed that I'm sort of missing is um, our doors to connect um, my different rooms. So I'm going to go ahead and make some doors. And I'm going to make a door with a rectangle. I'm going to start at the very bottom where the um, floors meet the wall. I'm going to draw a rectangle. All right, and just because I want to show you how to use this tool, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my arc tool right here. And the way this tool works is I'm going to click right here. I'm going to come over here and click to make a straight line. But once I've clicked that second time, if I move the mouse, I'm going to grab um, this curved line, which is what I want. So I'm going to click that, and I've got a nice curved line. I'm going to grab my eraser, get rid of the line um, in between. And I'm going to take my select tool 
click the door and press the, the, the delete key. And now I can see into that room. I'll go ahead and I'm going to pause it while I do on the other door. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and I added a, um, a door into my, my bedroom. Um, one thing that's starting to irritate me is this little line right here. Now, if I go to erase the line, you're going to see that it, that's going to be a problem because it's going to get rid of that wall. So I'm going to press Control-Z to undo. If I can't erase something um, because it's connected with something else, one thing I can do is I can take my Select tool, I can right-click on it, and I can tell it to hide. And it's mostly gone now. You can still sort of see where it is, but it's sort of less obtrusive. It still exists, it's just becomes, it just became invisible. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add um, some windows, because right now it's looking kind of strange without windows. I'm going to put a little bit more effort into the windows this time than I did last time. I'm going to go ahead and draw a nice long window here. And I'm going to use my offset tool. I'm going to take the shape of uh, the window. Oops. And I'm going to shrink it a little bit. That's going to give me sort of the frame of the window. I'm going to click. And now I'm going to use a rectangle tool to draw little rectangles to get sort of individual panes of glass. There are lots of different ways that you could you could make these windows. Um, this is just the one that um, I'm going to do. Feel free to experiment on your own. I didn't do a very good job of making them even, um, but just uh, for sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and, and keep it the way it is. Um, if you get something that looks like this, you should probably go ahead and um, redo it to make sure that they look a little bit more even than mine. So I'm going to grab my paint bucket real fast. I'm going to throw some um, translucent paint onto the window so that we can see through them. So I went ahead and I sort of redid my window. It looks a little bit better. It's still a little uneven here at the end, um, but I'm not going to um, worry too much about that. I could take my move tool um, and move some things around to make it look a little bit better, but um, for now I'm going to leave it. And now comes the interesting part. It's time to sort of decorate um, the inside of our house. We're going to do some interior design. And there's a really neat feature of SketchUp that you haven't seen yet, and I'm going to go to Window, Enter Components. And basically, what we can do is we can search for um, different things, and we can actually download pre-made models into our own model. Um, and almost anything you could think of, different kind of cars, TVs, sofas, beds, um, fancy doors, refrigerators, anything you could think of, someone's probably made it and put it here in what's called the um, model warehouse. So, for example, if I search for sofa, It's going to find all kinds of, um, of interesting sofas for me. And I can go through and look at it and see which one I like the best. Um, and when I find one I like, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to click on the picture. And SketchUp is going to go ahead and download that model. And in just a second here, it's going to sort of appear at the end of my, of my cursor. All right, so the sofa is indeed on the end of my mouse cursor like I thought it would be. And so I can sort of move it around um, and decide where I wanted to place it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place it right here. Now there are a few things I need to show you about how to manipulate um, these kinds of models. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is the rotate function. And so right now my, my model is still selected, which is what I need. If it weren't selected, I should get a select tool and select it first. And I'm going to grab my rotate tool. And what I want to do is I want to turn the couch so it's facing um, facing towards the right. And that's, it's actually not that hard, but what I need to do is I need to make sure that in that case, my little rotate tool here is on the ground. So I'm going to, it's on the ground now, so I'm going to press and hold the shift key. And that's going to lock it on the ground. And I'm going to go to the middle of my model as close as I can to it. I'm going to click and release the mouse one time. 
Okay. Now I can let go of shift because right now my um, little sort of compass, my protractor, is locked down on the ground in the middle of my model. Now what I need to do is move my mouse out straight. Um, right now it's out straight to the right so I can see the right axis or I could do it to the green. Either way, it doesn't matter, but one of those two. Once it's out straight and I see either the green or the red, I'm gonna click the button one more time. Once I do that, when I move the mouse, I'm actually gonna rotate the sofa, just like that. And so I click one final time to lock the sofa into place. Okay, now I'm going to have to move the sofa where I want it to be. Now, moving can be tricky. Um, the best advice I can give to you is when you move something, you go in one direction at a time. So I'm going to move it over and click. And then I'm going to move it um, sort of down towards me. One um, movement at a time. Um, it's a little tricky at first, but um, with some practice, you'll, you'll learn to get it. Another feature um, I want to show you is called the Scale Tool. Um, the scale Tool is actually right over here. And if I click the Scale Tool, um, for most models, these little uh, green boxes will show up. If I grab one of the corner boxes and move my mouse, what should be happening is I will be able to resize the sofa to make it bigger or smaller. Okay, so there's my sofa. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend some time and I'm going to decorate um, my room. I'm going to add a TV. I'm going to add a coffee table. I'm going to go into the, my bedroom and add a bed. Um, my kitchen should have some refrigerators. Um, and uh, each time I, I might have to use the rotate tool, the move tool, the scale tool, and those kinds of things. So I'm going to go ahead and stop because I don't think there's any need for you to watch me do the whole thing. Um, I'll pause the video and I'll come back when I've gotten um, some more done so you can see the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Okay, so I spent a few minutes and I decorated the house. Um, you'll see that I actually added another room. I decided that it was silly not to have a bathroom, so I added a bathroom um, on the edge of my um, bedroom. So the bathroom, of course, has a sink, it has a shower, it has a toilet, um, and I threw a jacuzzi in there. Um, my bedroom has my bed and my bookshelf. Um, I put some windows around the house. And my living room has a sofa, a coffee table, and a TV on a stand. Um, I also put a painting on the wall in the, uh, in the living room to sort of class the joint up a little bit. And then in my kitchen, I have a kitchen table, um, a stove, a fridge, and a nice big window um, looking outside. Um, as sort of the final touch, I went through and I added some flooring. So each room has a different kind of carpet. Um, actually, the bedroom and living room have carpet. Uh, the bathroom has tile. Um, and the materials, you'll find one for tile. Um, the kitchen has hardwood floors. And I went ahead and changed the color of the walls in each room. Um, and of course, in the materials, one of the categories is just straight colors. Um, so this is your task, to create a house um, with four rooms, a, at least four rooms. You can have as many as you want, but a kitchen, a bedroom, a living room, and a, and a um, bathroom. Um, it should be decorated. It should make sense. Um, it should have flooring and it should have color on the walls. There should be windows. Um, and that's about it. You're going to have to use the rotate tool um, quite a bit um, and the move tool quite a bit. And you might have to at some point use the scale tool to make things a little bit bigger or smaller. Um, but enjoy, have fun, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with. One more thing before I go, um, I just want to reiterate that there are, of course, two ways to save your model. You should have been saving all the way up to now um, by using the normal save as and saving your um, SketchUp file. But now that you're completely finished, um, what you turn in, I actually want to have um, is the export 2D graphic, and that's going to be a picture of your house. Make sure that before you do the export 2D graphic that you have a good view of the entire place, because whatever view I have right now is the view that it's going to save. So if I'm zoomed way, way out, and I export the 2D graphic, that's what it's going to be saved. So I get a nice view where the model's front and center, and I can see all the rooms, zoom in as much as I can be, um, export that and turn that in to me on Schoology.